Hi, my name is Ed Shad, curator of The Broad, and I'm here to talk to you about the painting Cairo from 2013, Julie Moretu's stunning reflection on the Arab Spring Revolution, which began in Tunisia in late 2010 and spread to many countries, including Egypt, Yemen, Syria, and Libya. These protests called for better standards of living and the end of oppressive governments. And the aftermath of the Arab Spring is ongoing. It continues to be a force in the world ten years later. Revolutions begin for so many reasons. They gain directional and accumulative force over time. But they often get their spark from individuals. Like the call for social justice inspired by the murder of so many black Americans at the hands of police brutality, specifically George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, the Arab Spring also horribly began with unjust and senseless death. On January 4, 2011, Mohamed Bouazizi, a street vendor in Tunisia, immolated himself. After being harassed and humiliated by municipal officials over a permit for his produce cart. His death was the catalyst for protests that quickly overthrew Tunisia's long term dictatorship. Earlier, in June 2010, another man named Khalid Mohamed Said was pulled from an internet cafe in Alexandria, Egypt, and was killed in custody by police. When Bouazizi's death brought revolution in Tunisia, Said's death gained force, becoming one of the rallying cries that sent Egyptians to Tahir Square in January 2012. Every revolution has a spark, but revolutions also have deep traumatic histories, as well as an afterlife of ongoing inspirations for change. Even when suppressed, Revolutions become touchstones for both the past and the future. They are both event and spirit. Poignantly, for instance, when Egyptians took to Tahir Square in 2012, they were standing in a space once occupied by the barracks of British colonial troops. Barracks that were torn out in the wake of a 1952 revolution, which brought the end of Egypt's monarchy. 1952 gave the area its name. Tahir means liberation in Arabic. As artist Julie Moretu has said many times of her work, she aims to do more in her paintings than illustrate events. For she knows that revolutions echo the past and call out into an unknown future. In 2011, Moretu, who was born in and spent the beginning of her life in Ethiopia, and later moved to the United States, followed the events of Tunisia, Egypt, and so many other countries very closely, beginning a body of work to capture, reflect upon, and convey the uncertain and dynamic life those events would have. One central feature of her painting from that series called Cairo is a circular space, which is a depiction of the traffic circle in the middle of Tahir Square. Surrounding the circle is an incredible array of marks. Some of these marks are architectural drawings, and one can identify directly the Mogama government building and the mosque of Masid Omar Makram. There are also topographical overviews of streets, as you would find on Google Maps or on ancient maps of the city of Cairo. There are calligraphic brushstrokes, there are vectors of colorful lines. There are small ink slashes in which accumulate into drifts, which seems like mountains, like ravines or sand dunes. Collectively, the effect of these marks build in intensity and energy, all of them swirling around to hear square like smoke, like wind, like rising clouds circulating and offering immense weather. Moretu calls these marks in all of their variety characters. And Moretu's use of the word character strikes me as remarkably pliable. Shades of the word character speak of individuals, as in characters in a novel, or a person's individual character. Other shades of the word refer to characters in printing or in writing. The verb to character means to engrave or inscribe. 
Cumulatively, Muretu's characters or marks are capable of conjuring individuals, specifically people like Mohammed Bouazizi and Khalid Mohammed Saeed. But they are also capable of showing us how the lives of these individuals gain force and life in the world, inspiring others, becoming a critical mass that calls for change. In Cairo, characters become wind, become mountains, become complex forces sweeping over and out from the city, for the force is bigger than the city itself. One of the main features of the painting Cairo that's worth paying very close attention to, however, is when the characters disappear, when Muretu makes a statement through a lack of marks. You will notice that in Cairo, Tahir Square is left blank. By 2013, when this painting was made, Egypt was thrown into turbulence. In the wake of Mubarak, Mohamed Morsi was elected, and within months Egypt was torn apart leading to the intervention of the Egyptian military and the removal of Morsi from office. At the time of Muretu's painting, the fate of Egypt and the protests of the Arab Spring were uncertain and embattled. Yet Muretu saw the spirit of the calls for justice, a better standard of living, and the end of oppressive regimes as alive in the world and active. To hear square in the painting is blank, yet its energy proceeds in a mysterious and unquantifiable way. As Julie Moretu told the New York Times, there is no way the gesture of Tahir Square was futile. But history goes in fits and starts. There's this tension and contradiction, this weird entropic cycle of utopian ideals and the impossibility of that. That's what I'm interested in. The space in between. The moment of imagining what is possible and yet not knowing what that is. <laughs>